Boradav and Bobo Revez. Ron. Sit my do not very bored. Ron, it we are. So, if in Katrev Moor, and now in Seisneg, and now in English. Uh, good morning, my strange people. How's your day been? I'm Ruan, and welcome to my spooky home, or at least what passes for such right now. I will get to this. Anyway, if you're one of my usual strange people, then you know who I am. But if you're new here, I'm Ruan. I'm a goth and dark alternative DJ with both club gigs and on the radio, uh, both terrestrial and online stations, and a longtime gothic subculture scenester based in the greater Metro Detroit area, uh, specifically in my case, the Ann Arbor area, though I do make a habit of uh, going to Detroit often enough um, and have been for, oh God, quite some time. Uh, anyway, um, I have cats, I go antiquing, and I'm also a musician myself with about 20 years of classical voice training from the age of four onward, uh, about five years of classical and jazz experience on viola, and in my adult years, I'm, you know, a, I'm a uh, classical lyric tenor, and I noodle around with a variety of instruments of various, well, usually odd ones. <laughs> uh, feel free to hit like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications so you can see all of my upcoming streams and uploads. Uh, it's kind of a variety show, I guess. I do uploads about various topics, mostly concerning the, uh, the uh, gothic subculture, and um, especially um, uh, local history, the local scene, um, goth culture history. I do um, various like vlogging kind of topics that are a bit more relaxed. And when I'm situated in a new apartment, I will be uh, I, I will be returning my jigsaw puzzle streams on Sunday nights. Uh, yes, that is a thing that I've done for years. Anyway, if you're here, you may have found my videos and other works due to a recent harassment campaign raised by somebody who, according to her own GoFundMe campaign for donations, which she hopes to uh, raise money for costs associated with facial feminization surgery. Um, anyway, according to her own GoFundMe, uh, her name is Penelope Monson of Hamburg, Michigan. You may better know her as Poppy Diabolique, a widely used online handle of hers. Uh, for my longer time audience who may be unaware, Poppy is the is one of the co-hosts of the YouTube channel Zane and Poppy Wholesome Degenerates, which was previously known as the Trans Girl Therapist, and in case... Um, only the last part sounds familiar because you haven't seen her that channel in a while. Uh, Poppy was also previously known on the YouTube um, channel as Jess. Uh, all of this information is freely viewable on the ZNP channel and the aforementioned GoFundMe campaign started by the woman in question. Again, none of this is any kind of thing you have to deep dive to unearth. This is all freely available, very easily viewable, by Poppy's own hand, right? So anyway, Poppy is in her early 40s, about a year or so my junior. I don't keep track of things that tightly, and is rather disturbingly, given the events that I'm about to describe, a mental health professional with legal credentials in our shared home state of Michigan. Uh, Poppy has unjustly accused me of doing or at least attempting to dox her home address, despite the fact that I have never done such a thing, nor have I ever tried, and she has zero evidence for this accusation. Um, uh, all I've done is pull up Bing Maps during some of my recent live streams, Specifically, those streams which have examined the growing list of receipts of her bad behaviors, including her ethically bankrupt attempts to obfuscate a recent breakup and paint her now ex-partner as some sort of predator. The woman who dumped her is another transgender woman, a writer and artist, I believe, known on Twitter as Noah Flake. That's N-O-E-H Flake. 
spelled like usual. And another name she uses is Haley, though I'll stick with Noah or Noah Flake, as I think most people have uh, referred to her by the Twitter handle that she uses. Uh, it's the screens provided by Noah Flake, which started shifting audience opinions on Poppy. Between those screens and tweets of Poppy's, many of which I can no longer access and didn't have the clairvoyant levels of four a foresight to screen cap when I still could, I've put together the following timeline. Some dates are approximate, again, just due to the wealth of, uh, of, of tweets and screen caps and all of that, and some of which are not quite viewable to myself anymore. Anyway, it begins on the 21st of December, 2023, around 11 a.m. in Noah Flake's time zone, she dumped Poppy over Discord DM texts. Noah did attempt to be as kind as possible looking at her words, and as I've paraphrased before, she said, I still love you and care about you, but I need to take care of my mental health and this relationship feels unhealthy. You are welcome to interpret Noah Flake's texts in your own way, but I do believe that those of you with adequate critical thinking skills will admit that Noah looks like she made a fair, perhaps even kind attempt to end the relationship when she did. You don't really need any other context than that. Um, people are allowed to end relationships over whatever reasons they have. Um, those reasons may Hurt, be hurtful to the person being dumped. Uh, they may feel unjust to the person being dumped. They may seem completely stupid to the person being dumped and anybody who is aware of what was said. Uh, but, you know, you're not owed a relationship with any one person. So they're allowed to have stupid reasons. They're allowed to say hurtful things. Um, and there's not really anything you can do about it. Anyway, very shortly after, again, still on the 21st of December, in the words of Twitter power user and Poppy's now former friend, Gayest Fesh, as is his Twitter handle, um, also known as Gay Fesh or simply Fesh, I will be using Gay Fesh or Fesh from here on, Gayest Fesh just seems to be a Twitter thing. Um, Poppy proceeded to badger Noah Flake into not only taking her back, but also to reinstate previously made plans to meet up at the already booked hotel room in Noah's city on the 22nd of December, 2023, so that Poppy and her primary polyamorous partner, Xena, um, Xena is a non-binary transmasculine person, uh, their own words. Uh, they prefer going by they, them, um, and I think Zay with an X, Zem, don't quote me on the second set of pronouns because I'm not sure, but put a pin in Zena's um, they, them pronouns, okay? Anyway, on the 22nd of December, 2023, uh, Poppy and her primary polyamorous partner um, had plans to proceed, you know, with uh, visiting No Flake during the winter holidays. It seems that Xena's texts, or perhaps a voice chat between Zia, Zena and Noah via Discord, is what eventually led Noah to cave into Poppy's demands to unbreak up. Anyway, part of what is glaringly obvious in Poppy's desire to keep with the plans for Noah Flake to meet her at the hotel on the 22nd of December, 2023. This is within a day or so of unbreaking up, right? This is within 24 hours at best of unbreaking up. Um, Poppy, you know, part of Poppy's, you know, hopes with the, with the trip was to uh, engage in adult activities with Noah Flake. One can only guess, to varying degrees of accuracy or inaccuracy, what kinds of texts and voice messages Poppy se sent to Noah and what sorts of in-person convos were had so that Noah would engage in sex with Poppy. Again, this is the 22nd of December, maybe 24 hours tops from taking Poppy back. 
The next morning, the 23rd of December, around 48-ish, but definitely less than 72 hours from the initial breakup attempt made by Noah Flake, Noah broke up with Poppy for a second time. Yes, that is correct. A second breakup from the same person in less than three days. I cannot imagine a scenario where this would be considered a healthy reflection of the relationship, but I digress. Shortly after returning home to Michigan later that week, likely before the 31st of December, as best as I can figure out, Poppy began portraying the breakup as especially cruel of Noah Flake, soon portraying the sex that the two women had engaged with as Noah Flake somehow violating Poppy's consent via deception. She then launched she, Poppy, then launched a copypasta Twitter campaign to smear Noah's reputation, utilizing an infographic from Planned Parenthood, um, which illustrated the FRIES acronym for consent. FRIES in this context, meaning that for consent to be meaningful, it must be freely given, reversible, informed, enthusiastic, and specific. The rationalization employed by Poppy is that her consent to engage in sex with Noah Flake was not informed, claiming that if she knew Noah didn't really love her, then she would have never consented. As a mental health professional, Poppy has certainly has the education to know that feelings don't work that way and can be very complicated for the individual expressing them. Uh, making the basis for Poppy's accusation of, uh, uh, of a sexual violation highly shaky at the very best. Uh, furthermore, as Gay Fesh um, noted when looking at the infographic first used during this incident uh, by Poppy, juxtaposed alongside screen caps that Noah released maybe another maybe two weeks after Poppy's attempted smear campaign against Noah Flake. But, um, but, uh, but yeah, um, Gayfesh concluded that, you know, if Poppy's going to say that uh, the, the consent was not informed of Noah Flake's true feelings at the time towards Poppy, then, uh, then, Noah Flake's concern, um, consent was neither freely given, enthusiastic, nor, in my own opinion, reversible, as Poppy's evident coercion of Noah to take Poppy back makes it seem like Noah may have felt wanting to stop at any point of the activity would have potentially resulted in another tantrum from Poppy, which Noah would have wanted to avoid. Hell, Noah wasn't even allowed to rethink the breakup for at least 24 hours. So it seems Poppy doesn't even treat Noah's consent to be in a relationship in the first place as something that can be easily reversible. In the early part of the smear campaign against Noah Flake's character within the first 10 days of 2024, Noah tweeted a bad argument against Poppy's allegations, being that Noah herself identifies as asexual. Now, as someone who's been rather critical of, su of some of the bizarre mental gymnastics, both tweeted and blogged, on Tumblr especially, from those who identify as asexual, a vocal number of asexuals do say that they are perfectly capable of desire for sex or even a potential sex drive. They just lack a feeling of sexual attraction toward any specific person. Which, okay, you know, I, I, it's not my job to understand the mental um, justifications for that phrasing of one's feelings. I just my job is to say, okay, sure, and move on with my life. Anyway, 
Anyway, then there's the fact that as a junior high student in the 1990s, one of the first things I learned about these sorts of sexual violations is that they're not about desire for the person it's committed against, but about power and control of the person it's committed against. So I do believe Noah has since admitted that, you know, using her asexual identity was a bad argument. Uh, but I can't find that tweet, so don't take my word on it. Um, just like I, I seem to remember her eventually saying this. So um, regardless of, regardless anyway, this was when I first responded to one of Poppy's tweets about this situation, which was simply to state that this was a bad argument from Noah. I still believe this is a bad argument from Noah, as it clearly led to Poppy believing she now had the ammo to portray Noah as a manipulative liar. And my notes say to put a pin in this, um, because it does come up later. Um, anyway, around the 17th of January, I saw a tweet from Sage Alexis, a member of the open triad polyamorous relationship between herself, Poppy, and Xena, uh, and this tweet added Gayfesh to a shit list of those with whom Poppy's audience were not allowed to follow, ending with the statement, no exceptions. Knowing that Gayfesh had been friends with Zayn and Poppy, I was curious and checked his own Twitter, which was where I found um, uh, one of his own tweets boosting the screen caps that Noah Flake took from the conversation with herself and Poppy on the 21st of December, 2023. And now these screen caps had been released by Noah. Uh, Gayfesh detailed that he didn't want to be involved, but Poppy basically gave him an ultimatum, or at least what felt as such, and forced his hand. Um, and because he didn't want to just parrot Poppy's words, he took her allegations seriously which, you know, is what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to just believe everybody's, you know, allegations of victimhood without clear evidence, but you are supposed to take it seriously, even if it means you're just going to put a pin in that for later reference should additional allegations come up in the future. Anyway, so as I said, he didn't want to be involved, but he also didn't want to just parrot her words. So he took the allegation seriously and examined all the evidence that was presented, including presented from Noah Flake, which included the screen caps of the texts that she had tweeted out a couple of days before. Um, so anyway, Fesh then found testimonials from other exes and former friends of Poppy and Zena's. He weighed that against previous concerns he'd built up during his friendship with ZP, and after one final convo with Poppy, a relatively minor argument, all things considered, about the effectiveness of an article Poppy was using to bolster her claim of uninformed consent via deception, an article that Fesh believed could also be used to bolster things such as the trans panic defense of violence against trans women in especially, uh, he realized the friendship just wasn't worth it anymore to him. Uh, furthermore, he felt Poppy's behavior towards Noah Flake was toxic enough to tweet about it, and at time of writing this, he still periodically updates on the situation Poppy has created, including any correction of their accusations against himself and of others, or at least any accusations from others that he has the or against others that he has the information um, he feels he, you know, he feels will correct um, Poppy's allegations against another, against a third party. So on the 20, on the 18th of January, 2024 was around the time I decided to start streaming about the Poppy situation as this was very concerning to me, especially as I had long been aware that Poppy and Xena live in the periphery of the greater Metro Detroit area. As previously stated, I live in Ann Arbor, Michigan, which is commonly included in part of the Metro Detroit area. I've been an active part of the dark alternative club eh, subculture and alternative queer scenes in Central and Southeast Michigan since I've been on my own circa 1997, age 17. Uh, I love and care about this community, and the majority of my audience on YouTube has been local to me since its beginning. 
Uh, if there is a person or number of persons acting together that have shown a habit of being a danger uh, within the local scene, I want to raise awareness as much as possible. This danger need not necessarily be physical. It could also be a danger to the mental health of anyone who gets involved with this person or number of persons. So most of my streams about the situation uh, Poppy has created for herself have focused on the receipts provided not only by others, but also herself. An extended cut of the final DMs between herself and Gayfish was released by Poppy, I want to say around the 23rd of January. And in my opinion, uh, and that generally agreed upon by a, at least a couple of other live viewers to my own streams, the final DMs bet of between herself and Gay Fish, which Fesh had omitted from, you know, like like the final lines um, of Poppies, which Fesh had uh, omitted from his original screen cap. Um, and I think where Fesh ended it seemed perfectly reasonable. It made Poppy look stubborn, but that's about it. That's about it. Like if you know additional context, it might even seem a relatively understandable level of stubbornness but the final lines of her own that, you know, were in her own screen caps that she later released around the 23rd of January, I think it makes Poppy look worse. She not only remains stubborn about what Fesh felt was a source of dubious usefulness, but she made a boundary that attempted to dictate to Fesh how he should think about her and speak and feel and speak about Poppy. Uh, her closing paragraph within that screen was a also a very wordy version of, again, to paraphrase, sorry, not sorry, I'm right and you're wrong, and fuck you and your feelings. And uh, I, I, again, this, 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 this makes her look not only stubborn, but vindictive and at least verbally abusive, right? Like this, this is not something that's going to make you look good in the eyes of people who are, at, especially in the eyes of people who are aware that you are a mental health professional with legal credit, you know, authorization to practice in your state. Like, like this, this is not a good look. So anyway, a regular inclusion of my streams on the Poppy situation was a city-to-city -city search on Bing Maps from Ann Arbor to Hamburg. Again, I previously stated this at the beginning of this video. This was just a city-to-city -city search, which I thought was a good idea as it was intended as a visual aid to assure that to my overwhelmingly local YouTube audience that Poppy is indeed within the local area as Michigan is a fairly big and bifurcated state, meaning that there's the lower peninsula known as the Mitten and there's the upper peninsula known as the UP. Um, and um, and yeah, the, the culture of the UP has a lot of uh, friends of mine and I like, or not I, but a lot of friends of mine had previously been unaware that the Red Green Show, which is set in a fictional town in rural Ontario, like I've got friends who, you know, until fairly recently thought it was set and filmed in the UP because it airs on PBS in Michigan. <laughs> I mean, it's a funny show, but that's like how um, culturally identical the two areas are. But anyway... Um, like I said, this was a city to city search. I thought it seemed like a good idea as a visual aid um, because Michigan's a fairly, you know, largish state. You know, like I said, there's the Mitten, there's the Upper Peninsula. Um, you know, people who just know, oh, well, Hamburg, Michigan, that doesn't mean anything. You know, it's a big state. And so I was just like, well, you know, like I'm, I'm hereabouts and Hamburg, Michigan is uh, hereabouts. So you know, like, yeah, it is fairly local. Anyway, um, and I've been aware that Poppy, at the very least, has a P.O. box in Hamburg, Michigan, uh, since I discovered um, Zane and Poppy's channel around, like, late 2019, early 2020, 
and um and and they used to have their po box listed in the description box of videos so again not information that is at all difficult to find so around the 27th of january 2024 poppy then turned um a lot of her attention to my streams as some how word got to her in spite of having Gayfesh blocked uh, by herself and um, but anyway um, so yeah like word got around her that I tweeted in a reply to Gayfesh about how depending on the traffic conditions linked to the Bing map satellites because you know there's traffic satellites linked to both Bing and Google Maps and that's where they get their driving estimate that's where they get the drive time estimates from is from the traffic satellites so based on that her city is between a 15 and 30 minute drive from my city and that's why i remain invested that's all none of this indicates any of poppy's allegations to even be possible especially not her false allegation that i'm trying to find her house as i've since tweeted this would be equivalent to saying if you do a map search for directions from the city of Tacoma, Washington to Seattle, somehow you'll get directions to Vouch's home and his address. Like, <laughs> that's not how this works. That is not how any of this works. And given that this is a very obviously preposterous um, scenario of somehow getting Vouch's home address from a city to city search from Tacoma to Seattle and, you know, he lives in Seattle. He's very open about the fact that he lives in Seattle. And, you know, but, you know, um, so if it's preposterous to think that searching from Tacoma, Washington to Seattle, Washington will somehow give you Vouch's home address, then it is equally preposterous. And quite obviously so that my attempt at a visual aid to show, you know, just city to city you know, th this this just shows how preposterous Poppy's accusations against me are, because that's not how any of this works. <laughs> like, I would need to have her home address, which I don't. I have a P.O. Box address at best, right? So anyway, on the 28th, Poppy's attempts to smear me with provably false allegations began to affect my life as one of her friends, or at least online friends, it's still some level of friendship, um, who was still, at the time, a moderator of a Discord s server associated with a bigger left-wing political streamer who'd been incredibly kind to me during my current period of homelessness, including boosting calls for donations to keep me out of a, out of a tent, you know, at, at the beginning of this year, well, that moderator decided to remove and ban me from the Discord server without even bringing up the allegations being made by Poppy to the um, to the servers, you know, associated with the, uh, the, a completely different streamer, you know, in that server's mod chat. I shortly after reached out to both a friend of mine, you know, online friend, of course, who is still today on that moderation team, as well as the streamer in question, to have the decision overturned. The alleged evidence that I'm somehow trying to dox Poppy's home was examined by the moderation team. The action was then overturned, and I was sent an invite link to rejoin that server, and the moderator in question was removed from that position. Um, also, Poppy herself was removed and banned from that Discord server for her repeated attempts to drag the streamer in question into her relationship drama against the streamer's repeated wishes to not be involved. It is because of that wish that I have declined to name that YouTuber, but I'm also going to be frank, it's not at all hard to figure out. I am, though, going to request that if that you do not speculate on the streamer's identity in the comments below, nor name them if you already know, as they truly don't want to be involved. Now, DMing me is another story. Just please leave this person, especially their name, out of the public convo. They've been 
extremely nice and kind to me that I feel the least I can do is respect their desire to be unnamed in this. Like, like I know that this streamer and I are not like, you know, like we're not anything more than like friendly online acquaintances that, you know, that like, and they're aware of my situation and because they really do care about other people, they, they think I'm worth helping. So, um, anyway, uh, that said, um, if you, you know, e even if you don't know who this streamer is, Poppy has made a number of enemies amongst, uh, amongst even other LGBTQ, especially other trans streamers. And most of them, even Gayfesh, who he himself has decided to sense distance himself from me over what I genuinely believe is either old and or out of context info or just an overblown misunderstanding, but whatever, that's, that's fine. Um, but yeah, like, you know, these, these other, um, LGBTQ, especially trans streamers have genuinely been kind to me. Um, especially since Poppy decided to accuse me of trying to dox her home. Again, is a provably false accusation. Anyway, later on the 28th, God damn, I'm up to 14 points now on this timeline. Um, later on the 28th, I streamed addressing these allegations of stalking and attempted doxing and treated them all as patently absurd, as you can tell by my, by my stupid little voice about Poppy. Yeah. Um, but anyway, when Poppy and Zena's out-of-state third in the open triad, Sage Alexis, came into the chat, I pointed out that I'm a disabled and homeless and my tent was arsoned on the 7th of January and neither she nor anybody else is going to make me feel, feel ashamed of collecting donos whilst streaming because I have two geriatric cats, one of whom is so neurotic that he stops eating if I'm away longer than overnight. Um, Sage then accused me of playing a question of Wimplex and Ed Paul games before I blocked her from chat. Uh, later that same stream, Poppy, via the um, ZenP channel account, showed up in chat and I blocked her even faster because I'm not going to sit there and take her abusive language when I did literally nothing wrong. Anyway, on the 29th, while I was still sleeping, leftist Twitter, or at least the portion of it that is aware of the Poppy situation, seems to become aware of the fact that she's now attacking a literal homeless man with two geriatric cats who's been living, who had been living in a tent for over a year until it was set on fire just weeks before the day of the 29th. And what was once a she said, she said around a tumultuous breakup where one person had become a minor public figure with a fairly decent image, but the other had very concerning tweets regarding the first woman was now being seen as a vindictive snake attacking a homeless disabled man who's comparatively powerless and at risk of potential death, considering, you know, what I, you know, um, blogged about on my Ko-Fi page and, well, Michigan winters. Like, yeah, it's in the 40s this week, but that can change at a moment. Like, Michigan winters are goddamn insane and unpredictable to, you know, the uh, the laity. And I, I'm not going to pretend it's going to stay like this, you know, through April. Like, there's usually a snowfall first week of April in Michigan. So, like, no, no, I'm, I'm not going to pretend this. Anyway, on the 30th of January, Poppy acknowledged to her Discord server that, yes, I'm homeless, and made what's possibly the most white Karen shit lib announcement post, going on and on about how, well, there's resources for homeless people in our state, and he can stay with friends if he has to. Basically admitting that, you know, she never read my blog post to my Ko-Fi uh, from earlier this month. Then again, she's also boasting about her pathetic attempts at 
of trying to get me kicked off of Ko-Fi and Patreon, which I barely use. I'm seriously considering switching it all over to Ko-Fi and just using Patreon to support other creatives. But uh, anyway, like, so why should she have, you know, read anything that I've written? Anyway, it's clear that this isn't helping her image amongst other leftists, since it's obvious she has no idea what she's talking about as far as resources for the homelessness go. Um, <laughs> um, resources, you know, for uh, anyone who's experienced chronic homelessness. Like, she clearly doesn't actually know anybody who's experienced chronic homelessness in this or any other state. So, um, my final point on the timeline is on the 3rd of February, the aforementioned streamer who never wanted to be involved stated in a stream like, you know, that just seemed pretty impromptu on their channel that afternoon. Um, anyway, that streamer actually brought up this, you know, situation for like literally a minute or two and publicly stated that though there were no hard feelings held towards Poppy, the streamer in question was bothered by Poppy's repeated tagging in posts on Twitter, saying this streamer somehow agreed with and supported her, even though the streamer in question was never involved and has a uh, has has a uh, um, framed it, you know, or, or phrased it as an allergy toward being involved, right? So. You know, this streamer was never involved, never wanted to be, and the streamer then stated that Poppy had actually been blocked ostensibly on Twitter and explicitly blocked, you know, um, stated that she'd been explicitly blocked on Discord and stream chats. Uh, the full um, VOD of this stream as of the 5th of February is still public. Again, I'm not naming this person as they don't want their name dragged into this. Um, any more than it has been by Poppy, and even that, you know, this person does not want. And um, and this streamer has made several attempts, you know, to assert this and statements to this. That said, it's really not difficult to figure it out, but if you DM me, I can privately send you a link if you promise that you won't talk about this in the comments on the video in question, that he won't bring this up on Twitter. Like, I really, I cannot stress how much I want this person's request to be left out of this. I just, if you want receipts, I will provide the receipt to this privately upon request. This is literally the only instance where I will provide receipts privately. Um, anyway, and this is where I'm ending the current timeline. If this sad, chronically online, middle-aged dipshit wants to let her mask not just slip, but proceed to fall off and show everyone her true white Karen colors, so be it. I am, I'm not going to stop her. I have neither the means nor the want to stop her from letting her mask slip. I, then there's the fact that I, I mean, like, and here's some other, like, relatively minor but very telling stuff, like the fact that while she's careful to refer to me at, as he and even a man in her public posts on Twitter and who knows where else, she thoroughly ungenders me um, in her calls to an organized harassment of me on her paywalled Discord server uh, by referring to me as a they and a this person, which kind of makes me wonder how much how, how much more transphobic she's getting towards me in DMs she thinks will forever remain between herself and her equally fake leftist, aka shit lib buddies. Um, really makes you wonder why she came down so softly on Brianna Wu, doesn't it? Really makes you remember how the screens of DMs that were posted to Tumblr you know, of conversations that an ex had with Poppy back in last summer, like in June of 2023, uh, where it shows Poppy um, regularly, like maybe not all the time, but at least periodically misgendering um, her non-binary transmasculine primary partner, Xena, who again prefers to be referred to with they, them, um, or Z, them. And, you know, 
I'll, I'll get pedantic if you say, oh, pronouns aren't preferred. I'm like, no, technically they are. Like even cis people have preferred pronouns, you know, because, you know, um, it's just like as a matter of courtesy and politeness, you know, we use what people prefer. So, yeah, like, you know, like, um, but anyway, honestly, like the way Poppy misgenders me as a they on her own Discord server uh, was less surprising than how she, you know, periodically will, you know, slip in DMs with other people and refer to Xena as she. Um, but, you know, the, the first time I saw her misgender the person she's apparently still engaged to marry. Um, I, I'm, I, I can't say that I'm even disappointed in addition to being unsurprised about how she's so willing to ungender me in what she feels are going to be private, unseen convos. Uh, it's, it's really telling. Like, for me to be disappointed, I, I would have had to not see the screens from the, you know, from, from the convos um, back in June of 2023, where Poppy um, periodically misgenders Xena as a she. So, you know, I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm neither, I'm neither surprised nor disappointed at this point by anything Poppy says about me. So, you know, I don't even I don't even take that as hurtful at this point. It's just it's just her being petty. Let's just admit that it's just Poppy being petty because that's her mo. It seems anyway. Um, so like remember this also like when you look at um, Discord chat logs from like th over three years ago at this point or maybe nearly three years ago um, that she's decided to, you know, release to Twitter as if this means anything, you know, like as if this means anything when I've said repeatedly on stream and in uploaded videos and all over my TikTok and Tumblr and all of that, like that I find Avon, the Asexual Visibility and Education Network and its founder, David J to be incredibly problematic and um, they definitely don't speak for all asexuals. Um, I find, you know, I, I, I mean, yeah, I have an asexual friend. Actually, I have several and most of them have voiced some real discomfort with the, uh, with, with the whole, you know, thing of asexuality as a spectrum, like even, um, even, um, Argyle Dinosaur, a regular to my streams and chats has, um, said a number of times that like, Demisexual is just another flavor of, you know, average sexual attraction, right? That, you know, at some point that that's just how most people, you know, end up feeling their attraction towards others. Um, yeah, some people, you know, get in that, um, that kind of, um, in, you know, instance of, you know, attraction earlier, you know, like, but it doesn't necessarily mean one is asexual, right? But, uh, but yeah, like, you know, like, th th that's not embarrassing to me, but, you know, let all, but keep that in mind that not only is this not going to embarrass me nor contradict anything I've said in support of Noah Flake, because, you know, um, like I said earlier, it's not my job to, completely understand why people identify with the with the terms that they do it's my job to you know say okay well you do you and move on with my life right you know like i you know, like when i voice these you know concerns about the inconsistencies i'm not speaking of any individuals i'm speaking of you know, an internet trend that seems to be overwhelmingly young people who have very poor sex education at their school or homeschooling, whatever the case may be. And, you know, and they're trying to figure themselves out and they're using the terms that, that, that you know, that they found on the internet or that they invented themselves that, you know, are, are trying to put their feelings into words and, you know, at some point they're going to, you know, have a more uh, mature um, view of their own sexuality, right? 
But, uh, but yeah, like keep that in mind that, you know, if Poppy's going to be dragging out things that I said three years ago that, you know, most of the asexuals I personally know would generally agree with. Um, yeah, and like I said, this was like three years ago, but like within the last year, Poppy has vehemently um, defended Euphoria Tori on Twitter, who, you know, if you're not aware, um, she's a, another transgender woman who was uh, being canceled by the Twitter left, um, I want to say this last summer of 2023, uh, over tweets she made long pre-transition over a decade ago and i mean yeah she says some messed up stuff on twitter for attention she has a habit of that uh i'm not going to defend everything she says or does but you know poppy's saying you know that like oh those tweets were 10 years ago you people got to you got you people got to chill about this but you know something i said three years ago oh that's just fine ammo you know that's 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 just fine. It's like, uh, like, like, basically, this is a rules for thee, not for me. Okay, whatever, lady. So, uh, so, so, yeah. Like, w w when when she thinks it'll get her in good with a relatively skeptical and critically thinking wing of leftist Twitter, you know, she'll say what sounds good. But when someone local who has a good memory for faces and thinks she poses a valid threat to vulnerable people in the local community, oh, well, then anything's game. Um, which, you know, brings me to Poopy's claims that you are resources for the homeless in this part of Michigan. Like, while this is technically true, I've already gone on in my blog on this uh, about why these resources are subpar or simply not an option for me. Uh, for those who don't know already or who don't want to read my blog that I posted to my Ko-Fi site, here's a brief summary. First, I've already got a social worker with the Washtenaw County Homelessness Program PATH. Uh, we've been working for about a year. The program is brutally underfunded when compared to the number of people in need and the needs people require. Two, I can't go to the local shelters because they won't allow people in who have cats. Not even with my ESA letter, and more importantly, an emotional support animal isn't the same as a trained service animal, and thus isn't guaranteed the same rights of access that a service animal would. Um, three, even placing Nigel and Phoebe in a temporary foster situation is not an option because, as I've said many times before, Nigel will stop eating if I'm gone longer than overnight. Um, <laughs> and at this point, he and Phoebe have been so closely bonded over the last nine and a half years that I would worry about her if I had to separate them for an amount of time. So yeah, they're both going to be 12 years old this June and it's like, I'm not going to do that to them. Like, you know, we're a family, the three of us, me and my two cats. And I cannot, under any circumstances, go back to another tent. It's, you know, like when subhuman shits set yours on fire after a year of robbing you blind and letting your once three cats out, getting one of them poisoned, then yeah, that'll put you in a seriously never again frame of mind. And I am absolutely terrified that going back into another tent will lead to getting my cats and I killed. So it, that's not going to happen. I cannot allow that to happen. Um, and any friends who have voiced wanting to take me in temporarily have also immediately lamented that it would either put them at risk of eviction or how they simply lack the space for myself and two cats. And additionally, there's the additional fact that um, at least as my social worker has led me to believe, if I leave the county for more than overnight, I am at risk of losing my Section 8 voucher, meaning that I will have to start again from square one. So if I'm out of Washtenaw County for more than, you know, a night or two, 
this will put me at risk of losing my Section 8 voucher to get me an apartment in Washtenaw County, meaning that, you know, if I come back into the county for any length of time, like I'd have to reapply or, you know, I'd be told that I should have applied in the other county or something like that. So, yeah, like like this, you know, that's. No, so anybody out there who thinks the system currently in place to assist the homeless is somehow at all adequate is just telling on themselves as being complete faux-gressives, F-A-U-X-gressives, as in faux-diamonds, faux-fur, and such people definitely are not in any meaningful way any more than further left are, are in any way are in any meaningful way more than left of center like no matter how much they insist otherwise there's simply no other way to put it while i don't think that makes them inherently bad people it still makes them willfully ignorant on a lot of socio-political issues in a way that makes their apparent beliefs simply incompatible with left-wing values and again this is not a moral judgment this is a socio-political judgment um so in conclusion, several friends of Poppy and Zena's have reached out to me, mostly in private, over the last week and change, airing out other concerns they've had and red flags that they saw go up over time that they'd known at least one of them. The Toxic Two are alarmingly codependent and seem to have a terrible habit of enabling each other's bad and even downright abusive behaviors towards each other and others. Like, they will weaponize um, their mental health conditions against others, including each other, and use their conditions as some sort of means to get excused from their absolutely terrible treatment of others. Their Discord server operates as little more than a, you know, a, as something closer to a low-key cult, where their intent seems to be to blur the edges of parasociality, with several members apparently believing Zayn and Poppy are their real friends, or at least until the affected individuals prove no longer useful to the toxic two, which usually happens after an, after uh, some arbitrarily decided slight was committed by the individual in question, typically asking too many questions, especially if one notices a hole in one of Poppy's stories. Uh, Poppy also has some concerning habits around the sexual boundaries of others, especially those younger than half her age, while these two should be considered a potential threat to the mental health of literally anyone who hopes to befriend them, especially if one, even after learning all of this, hopes to engage in a sexual relationship with one or both of them, they seem to be on a special threat to the emotional stability and mental safety of other trans people, especially trans women and others on the AMAB trans spectrum. If you, as I do, live in the greater Metro Detroit area, especially Washtenaw County, I advise that you avoid these two completely, but you're going to do whatever you do, so at the very least, ex proceed with extreme caution. Poppy can be especially charismatic, but her mask will eventually slip and reveal an extremely toxic individual who wields her education and profession in mental health as a means to manipulate others, especially her friends and partners. I love the greater Metro Detroit area gothic and alternative queer, alternative queer scenes very much, and I don't want to see people get hurt by someone who has the kind of history that Poppy has. You don't have to take my word for it either. I will provide relevant links in the description box of this YouTube video and will try to keep that list as up to date as possible. Uh, if you so wish, I will gladly accept donations via my Ko-Fi page or Cash App. Um, and I have a few completed crochet projects up for sale on my Ko-Fi shop and hope to gradually or add more. If you cannot donate or make a purchase at this time, at least spread this video around so that others will know about Poppy's toxic patterns of behavior and the risk to mental health that she presents to the Alterna queer community is and um, not just in Central and Southeast Michigan, but 
apparently nationally, as she has the means to travel out of state regularly enough to engage IRL with other paramours. Again, I ask that you hit like, maybe even subscribe with YouTube bell notifications, and feel free to leave productive comments if you so wish, or, you know, I don't know, leave abusive comments if you so wish. Um, it all counts as engagement as far as the YouTube algorithm goes, so um, um, drink your water, take your meds if you have to, um, and um, 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 otherwise, uh, take care of yourselves and have exactly the day you deserve. Hopefully it's a good one. Nusta, Aquil.